Maybe some of you are gray here wish you were young still. Mm. But it's very important to live your age to its fullness. Or you become a retarded being or a held back being who wants to be young all the time or something and can't mm -hmm. accept your age. So what does it mean to accept our age and all? Well, um, we are no longer in this world to take care of our own organizations. Yes, we're going to still incarnate, but no longer in order to take care of our own organization. Back in Greek times is when we hit a kind of peak, and we will not hit it until the next humans reach their peak on Jupiter. And at that time, we will have a new peak, a peak as we are developing Manas. But for now, we have to live with the fact that not only are we, our bodies, going to be crumbling and withering, but so is the earth. And so, um, we have to develop inwardly, and um, so we will no longer become part of the outer physical body to the same extent as we did in the past. So those who gave us our form, the Exusii, they're moving on. So we're going to be working with archive for form, archive that are ascending. So Sinus says this is going to involve major changes. Whatever you were used to is going to change dramatically, including our bodies. Now this gets kind of spooky to me. Steiner talks about the attachment of a second being to us. A trend in evolution, and he says we've got to be really open to this and understand it. A different form of experience will come to man in modern times. And he talks about how a, a, a being will be able to, through our etheric body that has gotten coarse and kind of dried up. So by dried up, think of the etheric as something that's always fluid and moving and breathing. And now as it becomes coarser, that kind of movement slows down and it becomes thicker and heavier. And it becomes dried up through that because it can't have that airiness of, of the etheric. And so, out of that, they'll be able to attach themselves. Now, I can point you to hundreds of documents where people are talking about adding at birth certain microchips into babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you always know where your baby is. Right? Has vital signs, so you never have SIDS happening to your kid. But that could also be your national ID card. You won't need your passports when you go through the borders anymore because you'll have these chips in you. There's already been RFID, radio frequency identificators, available for human beings. And it's been tried out in a number of different locales. What little things are the size of a rice grain that can be inserted right into your wrist. And all of your financial data, all of your bank accounts and all that can be put on it. It can be your cell phone. And it In can fact, be. it can be your internet connection. And what they hope to be able to train babies in the future is that they will be able to do context switching from this world to virtual reality world. So this harmonic nature, though, will work inside through this attachment to tell you those anthroposophists, they're so silly. They believe in the spirit. They believe in past incarnations and future ones. Don't listen to them. Take this vaccine and we'll get rid of them. Mm -hmm. It's coming. It's here. And it's here. It's here. It's not coming, it's just here. So accompanied by the second being, we're going to feel the urge 
to think just materialistic thoughts, to think not through one's own being, but through this second being, the second being that we can think through to a supercomputer and say, what's the best way to get from Toronto to Boston? Or the cheapest way or whatever? And you'll get the answer just like that. Or how many people? No, yeah, well, anyways. So, but Steiner says, hey guys, That's it. this may sound scary, but guess what? There's human will to do this, to harness ourselves to these. And it's better not to fight against them, because they're going to come. These things will come without fail. So the question really isn't what's coming, it's how it comes. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But it's also a question, since the what is going to come, it's a question of who are we entrusting to bring it. And this brings us back to what John Davy had to say to me. We can't leave these things alone. So as I say, it's not the what, it's the how that they're brought into human life that matters. So this little artistic picture, you can see it again. How do we attach to machines if we're going to have to? And Steiner gave indications about it. He said, we're going to attach not this way, but we're going to attach through some kind of way, through sympathetic vibrations that emanate from us. And he points to this guy, John Wall Keeley, in Philadelphia, in his time, who created machines that could start based on moral impulses. So he could think of something moral and he could play his violin, and this machine over there would pick up his vibrations and begin operations. Now, no one was able to reproduce this, so people go, ah, hogwash. This was nuts. This never happened. This was not true. He was a, he was a magician, a trickster. Mm -hmm. You have to have morality. The question is a question of morality. That's How do we get to linking morality to technology? Yep. And that's the question we'll be addressing on Saturday. So I'm going to now take you through some pictures of the immediate future that might shock some of you. So I want you to hear this verse before you get shocked. We must eradicate from the soul all fear and terror of what comes towards mankind out of the future. We must look forward with absolute equanimity to whatever comes. And we must think only that whatever comes is given us by a world full of wisdom. It is part of what we must learn during this age, namely to act out of pure trust in the ever-present help. And that's the key word here, help. There's not going to be interjections and so on. Help of the spiritual world. Truly nothing else will do if our courage is not to fail us. Therefore, let us discipline our will and let us seek the awakening from within ourselves. And another key thing, every morning and evening. These are the times to meditate. These are the times when the good forces in the spiritual world speak to us. And I have found this to be true in my own life. I find that 80% of my understanding came not from sitting there reading Steiner and going, oh yeah, I get it, but from reading Steiner maybe the night before, putting the book aside, and in the morning I got it. In the morning I had this flash and it was all there. And as I've been trying to put together this for the last 30 years or so since I've been a member of the society, these insights come to me in the morning. <coughs> so do we belong this world that's coming? Can we embrace it? What do you see? 
Do you turn cold and scorn, or do you try to feel enthusiasm for the work to be done? And so Gandalf says, yes, if you have not walked all these days with closed eyes and mind asleep, wake up now. And then he knocks at the door. Mm -hmm. So here's a company. You can see it's human AI, human. We want to transplant your brain into an elegantly designed bionic body. So how are they going to do that? So they're using artificial intelligence and nanotechnology. And they're asking you to interact with other people while you, they've got these monitors on so that they get the signature of how your brain is working so that they know something about you and all. And then they believe that in the future, not too far away, we will be able to create an artificial body, robotic body, and that we will be able to take you, meaning your brain, that has it's been frozen true. for these last 40, 50 years, and put it into this robotic body, and voila, you come back and inhabit that body. Why not? Is that what you are? Are you your brain? No. Does the heart have anything to do with this, being a human? Mm -hmm. What about the other organs? Do they have anything to do with being human? When people talk like this, they say, bring it on, boys. Bring it on. I just, I'm so sorry about the billions of dollars that are going into these things. But just as the quantum physicists have found consciousness and can no longer deny it, we're going to find more about the human being when we go down this path trying to find out how to cryogenically preserve the human consciousness. But these people think that the consciousness and the brain are one and the same thing. So, can you capture soul activity? Of course not. Okay, so I'm a, I said I was going to try to keep you free, and I know I'm already trying to give you some soul. <laughs> so, they want to reverse engineer the brain, because the brain is just a biological machine. And once we reverse engineer it, then we can build one, and we can certainly make it better. We can improve it. And then we can get rid of the bio-frailties and make it a real machine that doesn't die off when biology does. And so surveys have been done of the AI industry. I don't know the details of how many people, but I saw these results and thought I would put them up because they're interesting. 25% of the AI industry believes that by 2030, we're going to have this done. 50% by 2040, and only 10% think that'll never happen. So there's a US Brain Initiative, the Center for Neural Basis of Cognition, going on at Carnegie Mellon. And there's many other universities participating in this. And there's so many companies today from Googles to Facebooks and all that are, have large artificial intelligence departments working on artificial intelligence <coughs> uses for the future. But money is just pouring into these. Now, where some of this comes, there's this guy Ray Kurzweil and um, Hans Voravchek, who um, in 1998 looked at how uh, on a logarithmic scale. So if you looked at this on a linear scale, it would look like a straight line going across, going across, well, at a slight slope going across, and then it would come about here and go straight up. So they put it on a log scale, so you can see the log scale here, and they're finding that each time they look, this trend is improving itself. What this dots represent is what $1,000 of computing can buy you, and it's doubling every 18 months. So the power of the computer is improving. So Ray Kurzweil then put this together against the animal kingdom and the human kingdom, 
and he finds that by about the year 2025, one of these $2,000 computers will be as powerful as a human brain. But it doesn't stop there, folks. By the year 2040 or 2050, that one $2,000 computer will be more powerful than all living human beings on the earth at that time. And it doesn't stop there, it keeps going. So we've got big projects starting back in 2008, the Blue Brain Project. Here he is, Ray Kurzweil, The Singularity is Near. Look at some of these other books, Fantastic Voyage. Live long enough to live forever. <coughs> His premise there was medicine is improving so fast that if you can just not die soon, we'll enter an age where everyone will be able to get replacement organs and you'll live forever. And before that, the age of spiritual machines. What does he mean by spiritual? talks about GNR, genetics, nanotech, and robotics, and the keys to making all of this happen when humans will transcend biology. Now, is his picture wrong? Is his picture different than Steiner's? And I'm going to tell you, his picture almost lines up image by image with Rudolf Steiner's. Shocking, isn't it? But it's true. Only he takes a materialistic perspective, where Steiner takes a spiritual perspective. But if you look at what Steiner has to say, and we're going to start covering that, it's surprising how similar they are. So what's coming down the track? It's iron necessity what's coming. The only thing that we can do is change the how. They all see the same future. When you look, those pictures are painted by the angels in our astral body. They're there for anybody to see the future. You can see the future. You can see the future. It's there for you to see. So, is it our destiny to merge? Have we ever had such a dreary outlook before? How do you think it was before the flood? as the evil of the Rakshasas was pervading all of Atlantis. And the anthroposophists of those days were going, oh my God, look what's coming. We're all going to die, except for a few people. And as Steiner says, the tragedy this time isn't that the gods will bring about the destruction through water or fire. But it's people will bring it upon themselves. Exactly. But it's absolutely necessary. It's iron necessity. The question isn't what will come, this war of all against all, but how it comes and when it comes. So there's a great question. If we start merging machines with our bodies, what does that mean about the resurrection body. Do we have a resurrection body if it's been merged with machines? Can we achieve Atma if we've got prosthetic limbs? If we've got a pacemaker, does that mean we can never achieve Atma? Well, we're getting help from the spiritual beings. We keep saying, so human will. From AI's perspective, all human motives can be reduced to calcium. That's a quote. <laughs> they all see all of this as energy arising through voltaic cells in the body. Emotions, the same thing. The suitcase word for a set of ionic strengths. AI could be motivated to terminate mankind is the big fear. We're very worried about